Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Do you ever wonder how we end up as roommates in our own relationships? At what point do we start to collect rent for all the BS we put up with? When did it all go wrong and how? Today on our space, a husband breaks free from the old ball and chain. Life after divorce. My ex-wife cheated on me and divorced me last year. To this, I could have been more grateful. My marriage was a shell, nice and pretty from the outside, but empty and hollow from within. I was a broken man from years of abuse, both mentally and financially. Most of the money I earned, she would take from my account, which would lead me to be short on funds for bills and such. If I got mad about it, it would turn into an argument about how it was my fault for not making enough money. I could never do anything right by her. Anything I would try to do to please her would annoy her and just piss her off. I would often try to make a date for us or do something as a family, but she would not be into it. She would complain and get mad because she would rather have just been in bed and allowed to sleep. It got to a point that I did not even try. I ended up not including her in family activities. This would also piss her off, and she would say that I was depriving our children from time with her. After a while, she stopped coming home at night. At first, she would say she was sleeping at someone else's house, who I barely knew. Then, my questioning became an annoyance to her. She would tell me it was none of my business what she did. Then, even bothering to question her became a bother for me. If she did not come home at night, I did not even think about it. To be truthful, I was glad for the night she was gone. When she filed for divorce, I was extremely scared for my living situation, but I also felt a deep sense of relief. I did not even fight it, but I did read everything her lawyer sent me. He screwed up plenty of times. All of his mistakes is what actually delayed our divorce hearing by months. Every time I found a mistake, I would send back the paperwork, unsigned, to which his staff would rewrite it, but with sometimes the same, sometimes different errors, always to be caught by me. Some of the major errors, my name was spelled wrong, her name was spelled wrong, my date of birth was wrong, her date of birth was wrong, our child's name was spelled wrong, our child's date of birth was wrong, inclusion of other people's children, wrong marriage date, our home address was incorrect, inclusion of homes neither of us owned, inclusion of pets, inclusion of businesses neither of us owned, a settlement of $500,000 to relinquish ownership of businesses, different draft. Her lawyer's name was spelled wrong. This one had me laughing on the toilet. In total, there was about seven drafts before most of the errors were corrected, and even the final draft submitted to court contained major errors. He tried to argue before the judge that I should be responsible for the court fees and legal fees, but I successfully argued that most of the delays were on his part due to all the egregious errors. After our divorce, my ex is shacked up with the man she left me for, and he's an abusive boyfriend. Since I closed all the passwords to my banks, she has no access to my accounts and swiftly realized how much she was depending on my income to supplement her own. Also, she screwed over her uncle who was renting us his house and it almost went into foreclosure. He approached me about his situation and said if I wanted to stay in the house, I had to pay all the payments she did not pay. It was about six months of unpaid mortgage payments and totaled around $15,000. I did not have that much and proposed that I buy his house instead. I was surprised that he agreed. I now own my ex's grandmother's house. Now it has been a year since my divorce. I got a promotion which came with a significant raise. I still live in my house and upgrading what I can when possible. I do not have a girlfriend, but thanks to online dating, I'm banging a new girl every few of the weeks to a month. What a chaotic ride, OP. I'm so sorry. It sounds like it's been an uphill battle to get where you are, but I'm glad you're living your best life now. Update. Am I the a-hole for taking my daughter to Disney World? I'm a divorced dad with a six-year-old daughter. Over the summer, I took her to Disney World during my time with her. My ex-wife is furious with me about it and claims that I always do these things with my daughter. She claims that it is unfair that I am doing all these burst events with our daughter and stealing them from her. She is saying that it is something we should have done as a family since we will always be a unit. But she expected me to pay for her ticket and her own hotel room. I was never going to do that. I saved up some money and just went with me and my daughter for two days. When a estranged wife and her boyfriend first started hooking up, they took our daughter to Universal and a basketball game in Orlando. I was not invited to any of these events. But lately, a strange wife does not do anything with our daughter when she does have her. They stay at home all day and watch TV. That is why I take the initiative and plan things with my daughter. I usually have my daughter five days of the week during school, and in the summer, it is four days. I have taken my daughter on a couple of trips to DC and Hawaii. So am I the a-hole for taking my daughter to Disney and not taking my estranged wife? 
let's get some opinions from the community. Disastrous B9079 says, Not the a-hole. You're not together anymore. She shouldn't expect you to pay her away. I would be extremely grateful if I was her that you're able to take your daughter on these wonderful experiences. She sounds jealous. Keep doing what you're doing. Smile and Eyes says, Not the a-hole. When my divorce was final, 1 January, we still had plane tickets to Florida in February to see my parents. The ink was not dry and she asked about the details of the Florida plan. I said, me and the kids are going. You can get a credit for your ticket. She flipped out. It was a family vacation. She didn't come and it was for the best. A few months later, I heard that no one in my family liked her. They thought she was a snob. One more opinion from Colorado Grown 85. OP, you know you are not the a-hole. Good on you for planning and taking your daughter on these memorable trips. If your estranged wife wanted to plan a joint event and can pay her own way and half of your daughter's expenses, that's another thing entirely. Otherwise, just go on being a good dad. You're not the a-hole here at all, OP. You're being a parent. You're going out and doing things with your daughter. Your daughter is supposed to be experiencing the world, and that's exactly what you're helping her with. If your ex wants to spend her time sitting at home with your daughter, then that's on her, not you. Here's another post from the OP. My car, again. My ex-wife has ruined my credit. A year before we divorced, I bought her a brand new hybrid Highlander. She has always had money issues even before we got together. But now that I am no longer financially supporting her, her inability to control her spending is taking its toll. She is two months behind on her car payments and I am not going to rescue her this time. I have already paid for the maintenance on the vehicle several times. I even bought new tires because she needed them and has our kid with her sometimes. I cannot let my kid be in danger just because her mom is a mooch. The loan is in my name and the missed payments really hurt my credit. The registration is also in my name. So last week she went on a trip with boyfriend and I took it back. I went to several dealerships and I sold it. I barely made enough to cover the loan from the cell because the vehicle was in such rough shape. Update. I've let her use the car since. She's unable to get a car on her own due to her sub 500 credit score and a really bad history. It was a way of getting out of paying any kind of alimony or spousal support. She still has partial custody of her kid. Our kid still has to get to school and around town somehow. She had a really crap divorce lawyer. I ran circles around him representing myself. I'm not saying I'm a legal genius. He was just very bad. Plus, I was advised by my family, who are legal geniuses. We were renting an apartment at the time. So other than my cars, we had no major assets to divide. Yikes. Probably should have switched over that loan to her name. You sort of walked right into that one, OP. Update, 9-23-2022. A strange wife and her boyfriend came home yesterday to find their parking space empty. She called me to tell me that she thinks the car might have been stolen, and I told her that I sold the car. I said that she was two months behind on her payments, and it seriously hurt my credit score. She told me that it is unfair for me to do so because she was sick with COVID and was not getting paid. I called her on her lie because she has a county job and the county allows for paid administrative leave if you catch COVID. She asked me if I was going to help her get a new car. I said no. She and her boyfriend have enough money to go to Costa Rica for two weeks but cannot pay for a car for two months. She started to cry and hung up. A little while later, I get a call from her phone, but it was her boyfriend this time. He calls me a coward and other insults. I laugh at him and tell him that I am not scared of a guy whose waistline is equal to his height. He starts to threaten me at this point, so I hang up. They call back and I let it go to voicemail. In my voicemails, they recorded themselves insulting me and threatening me with bodily harm and death. I contacted my uncle, lawyer, and played the recordings for him. He told me to contact the police and press charges. I did that last night. He also told me to get a TRO so that they will keep their distance from me and my daughter. I filed my petition with the courts this morning. A strange wife texted to tell me that she is really sorry about what happened yesterday and that they were just upset. She asked if she could pick up our daughter because she has not seen her in almost a month. I told her yes, but only if you use the Highlander. It takes some big balls to ask you to get a new car after you took yours back. It's sort of funny that she thinks she can come to you with something like that after what she did to you. She needs to figure it out on her own. She's no longer your responsibility. Update for original post. A strange wife wants to move back in together, so I broke her heart. November 3rd will be my one year anniversary for my divorce. Since then, I've gone to therapy to better myself. While in therapy, it was suggested that I focus on my personal development. I did just that. I lost over 50 pounds with a change in diet and exercise. 
I got back into playing soccer regularly, and I even coached my kids' youth soccer team. I also started reading again. I try to read a book a week. My work life has improved immensely. I got a significant raise and promotion. I can easily take care of myself and my kid on my own. I usually have five days a week. Now, after all of this, my estranged wife wants back into our lives. I call her a strange wife because she completely disgusts me, and it is a play on words. Her new boyfriend, who rescued her from her horrible marriage, beats her. This latest incident was so bad that he sent her to the hospital. Our kid was with her at the time and was the one who called the ambulance. But my estranged wife does not want to press charges and is denying it happened. The bruising tells a whole other story. I went to a family party last night. I get along with this particular family very well and they called to invite me. I was cordial with my estranged wife, but I did not talk to her. Her family got into her delusional head that we still love each other. This could not be further from the truth. My strange wife may have liked how our marriage was, but I did not. I gray rocked and barely functioned as more than a second form of income to her. She also darvoed me the last two years of our marriage. I was emotionally and financially abused by this woman. The last year of our marriage, she was cheating on me with her boyfriend. When I confronted about it, she denied it and ran into his house. When I caught her outright, she said it was my fault because I was not supporting her enough. I was giving her all of my paycheck after I paid all of the bills. I did not buy any clothes or shoes for myself for years. Today, she finally showed up to a soccer game. After the game, she asked me if I'm ready to move in together. I look at her confused and asked, why would I do that? She goes on to this whole spiel about how we still love each other. We have a kid together, and it would be better to raise him together. I told her that I do not love her in any way, nor do I trust her at all. I remind her that she still owes me over $1,100 for getting her car fixed. She said she would pay me back if we moved in together. I laughed a good belly laugh. I bent over from laughing so hard, she started to cry, which made me laugh even more. I may be the a-hole for laughing at her, but after what I went through and all the work I have done to improve myself, returning to the source of all my torment would be effing hell for me. My kid still loves her, and I will never do anything to turn him against his mother. She can, and more than likely, do that all on her own. One person from the community has a comment. Pie Whore says, If she is still with her abusive boyfriend, You need to keep your kids away. I would consider going for full custody and supervised visitation. When she gets mental health treatment for battered women, then consider 50-50. It's worrisome to know that your kid is sometimes with this man who beats your ex. What's to stop him from hitting your kid? Is that something you're mindful of, OP? That could be grounds for you to gain full custody. Update. Found someone great. I know it is a struggle, and I know it will take time for everyone to heal during this period in their lives but I truly hope everyone finds happiness in their lives with whatever outcome they choose for their relationship. For myself, I've been through a whirlwind year. My divorce anniversary was November 3rd. Since then, I have been to therapy, worked on myself, and dated a few wonderful women and some not so great ones. On Monday, my estranged wife found a Facebook post from my girlfriend, Cher, about a trip that I took over the weekend. It was a great trip. We ate some really good food, got really drunk, and had an amazing time, during which We took a lot of photos. I usually do not take photos during these dates, but I really like Cher. When she asked if she could post photos of our trip, I gave my consent. I even told her to tag me in them. I knew this would cause some trouble, but the amount of trouble I got from my estranged wife and others, entirely her family, was quite frankly shocking. A little backstory for context here. Estranged wife cheated on me for over a year prior to our divorce. Estranged wife was even cheating on me prior to us separating. His strange wife officially moved into her boyfriend's house before our divorce was even finalized. We have been divorced for a year at this point. His strange wife was emotionally and financially abusive to me during our entire relationship. She is still abusive to me to this day. But the level of vitriol and disrespect she has for me sunk to a whole new low on Monday. His strange wife made it seem like I was the one who cheated on her. His strange wife was talking about how it is so embarrassing that I would do something like this to her. How indecent it is that I could post things on social media for everyone to see. How I humiliated her by posing in pictures with other women. A strange wife called me selfish and callous for not taking into account her feelings. I'm a coward for hiding the fact that I am seeing other people. A strange wife even said that I ruined any chance of us reconciling our marriage. That the love that she has been holding on to for me has been killed by my philandering behavior. Mind you, this entire time she's on the phone yelling at me, I'm laughing hysterically at her. I let her go for 30 minutes ranting and raving about how I killed our relationship and betrayed her love for me. A strange wife asked me 
how many women I slept with during our marriage. I told her none. I was faithful and loyal to her till the very end. She then asked how many women I have been with since our marriage ended. I laughed even harder and tell her, it is none of her business who I have been with since we are no longer together. I remind her that what I do is none of her business, just like it is none of mine what she does. She sent me pages of nasty and disgusting text messages insulting me and Cher. A strange wife threatened to DM Cher and tell her about me and how bad it was to be married to me. I told her to go ahead. She said that she wants to meet Cher face to face to see what kind of woman she is. The strange wife said she cannot be that good of a person if she is willing to break up a happy marriage. At that point I asked her, what the F is she talking about? We are no longer together and have not been for well over a year. I remind her that she cheated, left, and divorced me to be with her boyfriend. The strange wife then started to cry. The strange wife went on to blubber out that she was hoping that we could work things out and that it is not fair that I found someone to do things with. I should be doing things with her and our kid as a family. A strange wife tells me that she is not happy with her relationship with her boyfriend. A strange wife finally admitted that he treats her like crap. I have known these things all along. I take no joy in hearing about things from a strange wife, but I really do not care for her. I do not want to reconcile with her. Truthfully, I do not want to have any interactions with her ever again. But I am actually happy with my life right now. Cher brings me joy and makes me excited to see her again. She is the last person I text at night and the first person I text in the morning. We have plans to go on another trip soon. I know posting pics will cause another round of hate from a strange wife, and it will be worth it. Yeah, you being with someone else should no longer be your ex's concerns, especially after she started dating someone who was abusive towards her before you were divorced. Her opinion means nothing. She should have thought about how hard it would be to see you with someone else the moment she even entertained the idea of cheating on you and treating you like dirt. Two years update. Today is the two year anniversary of me finding out my girl was using me to cheat on her boyfriend. We were only married for 10 years at the time. No, they were not in an open relationship. Yes, neither were we. Yes, he knew she was married. My marriage was already long since dead. No, it did not end their relationship, but it did ruin his marriage. My then wife, 37, and I, 39, went to a party at her co-worker's house. Upon our arrival, a strange wife's co-worker's husband, Carl, came over to us and said, Hey Edward, it is so great to finally meet you. I corrected him and introduced myself. He said, Oh, I thought you were a strange wife's boyfriend. To which I calmly replied, Oh no, I am just her husband. A strange wife immediately tries to interject that Ed was only a friend. I looked at her and said, A very beneficial friend. A strange wife called me an a-hole and ran away to cry in a bedroom for the rest of the night. I felt like a 300 pound weight was lifted off my shoulders, figuratively and literally. This immediately made our little circle go silent. It got really awkward after that. To break the tension, I asked Carl to show me to the bar. I had a blast at the party. We were pretty much separated for about four months at this point, and at that time, she rarely ever came home. She had to be sleeping someplace. Only an idiot would have thought that she was staying loyal. Going to this party was her Hail Mary to reconcile with me, but that ship pretty much sailed off and was well beyond the horizon. I was completely done with a strange wife and all of her BS. The community has some more comments. Life Yogurt Closet 98 starts us off. Today is the two year anniversary of me finding out my girl was using me to cheat on her boyfriend. We were only married for 10 years at the time. No, they were not in an open relationship. Yes, neither were we. Yes, he knew she was married. My marriage was already long since dead. I was so confused until Carl showed up in the story. Ankit1000 says, Carl is the real hero here. Bensel McPrush chimes in, For those who are as dumb as me, hope he was married to a strange wife for 10 years. They separated and a strange wife moved to parts unknown. Four months later, a strange wife invites OP to co-worker Carl's house party in an attempt to reconcile. OP meets Carl who assumes OP is a strange wife's new boyfriend Edward. OP tells Carl that no, he's just her husband. A strange wife tells Carl that Edward is just a friend. OP clarifies that Edward is her F buddy. A strange wife makes a drama and storms off to the bathroom. OP gets to meet Carl's wine. Zandendito says, I'm glad you got out of that. Dragon's Bane 1 chimes in, Yeah, and you should probably thank Carl. I feel certain he knew you were not Edward, even if he truly did not. Thank him anyway. The OP replies, Carl's a great guy and we still hang out. He truly didn't know who I was. It was an honest mistake on his part. He still hasn't met Ed. <laughs> Neither have I. I would genuinely thank him. My strange wife and Carl's wife aren't really friends anymore. 
that has more to do with a strange wife's self-sabotaging nature at her work than my friendship with Carl. An excellent way to end a chapter in your life that really infected you, OP. I'm so glad you were able to get out of there, and I'm sorry you were mistreated for so long. It sounds like you really came out on top. You're extremely brave. What do you make of this saga? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on our space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. You sure don't want to miss it. Until next time.